Hey, what's up out there, guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is episode eight of my top 100 action movies from the 1990s series. If you've missed the first seven, they will be linked all over this video for you guys to check out later. But today, diving into movies number 30 through 21, another 10 fantastic action movies that deliver a little bit of it all. Some of these movies are bigger than others, but the imprint they have left on the action genre, in my opinion, is timeless. So let's get into it. Closing out the 30s, at number 30 is a bit of a forgotten gem from 1991 that I think still delivers everything you want from an action flick. It centers on a cop accused of murder and the only man who knows he's innocent is the killer who framed him in Ricochet, starring Denzel Washington, John Lithgow, and Ice-T. I can assume most wouldn't have Ricochet as high up on their lists, but I absolutely love it and I feel both Washington and Lithgow greatly elevate the material. This could have easily been an instantly forgettable action thriller from the early part of the decade, but with the heightened performances, the result is a just nostalgic ride of two fantastic actors going all in on their roles. Uh, Washington showed he had action range immediately in his career, and you can see that Lithgow is relishing in the role of the sadistic killer, but outside of that, I think Ricochet has all the pieces you need for a great action thriller. There's motivation for the hero, you can easily sense the capability of the villain and the game of cat and mouse that they play is evenly paced and is filled with violence and practical action and an ultra rewarding final showdown that was just everything we loved from action movies from the 80s but wrapped here in a sleek early 90s package. Moving along to my number 29 pick is a big budget blockbuster action flick of the decade that was set in Alcatraz where 5 million lives will depend on two men trying to break into The Rock from director Michael Bay starring Nicolas Cage and Sean Connery. Now to me, The Rock is just the perfect recipe for a big blockbuster action flick. You get Nicolas Cage jumping into the action genre as the everyday hero. He's paired with the legend Sean Connery, so you get that dual generation of acting leads, and then you get the, at the time, cutting edge direction from Michael Bay. This all translates to me into one of the iconic action flicks from the decade and a movie that can still easily sweep you up all these years later. I think Cage and Connery are fantastic together as they grow into a team and the mission, as melodramatic as it is, feels plenty intense and impactful with Ed Harris in control. This one's just filled with all the Bayisms, but it was still very much cool when The Rock was released and the blend of action on display in this over-the-top adventure is everything that was awesome about the genre in the mid to late 90s. Now coming in at number 28 is a classic remake of a classic martial arts flick to avenge the death of his master. A man will fight like never before in the thrilling Fist of Legend from 1994 directed by Gordon Chan and starring martial arts legend Jet Li. Admittedly, pure martial arts action movies from the 90s could easily have their own list. I probably will make one soon, but this remake of the Bruce Lee classic is one of the first martial arts movies I owned, and I couldn't get enough of the speed of Jet Li. This one tells a familiar story, but the fight choreography on display is riveting. No matter how many times you've watched it, Jet Li is impressive in this film with his breakneck speed and the fluidity of his movements and the result is a just a buffet of feverish action that will have you on the edge of your seat it's super hyper realistic and visually stunning to see the escalation of the action and whether lee is taking on one man or many men at once he never feels out of control and this controlled rage just elevates perfectly until it explodes in the fantastic final showdown Now, my number 27 pick is another nostalgic favorite of mine. It follows twin brothers who avenge the murder of their parents. One packs a punch, the other packs a piece, and together they will deliver when Jean-Claude Van Damme would star next to Jean-Claude Van Damme in 1991's Double Impact, directed by Sheldon Lettich. 
Double the Van Dam really was double the fun in this nostalgic 90s action romp. It's a simple story, brothers out for revenge, but the international locations, the practical action, Bolo Jung as the villain, and Van Dam doing a great job playing brothers makes this ridiculous movie magically ridiculous. You get the smooth, preppy-ish Van Dam, and then the slicked hair, cigar-smoking Van Dam, and you have to give him credit for bringing some range to this set of brothers to sell it just a little bit but i mean outside of that double impact just knows what it was it keeps a quick pace the killing is frequent there's a capability in the gunplay and the fight scenes are well staged which makes the movie a blast van damme is very young here but already showed he had the charisma to be a leading man and that's what he would go on to do after this movie but double impact will always be to me one of his best My number 26 movie would be the kickoff of a franchise that is still going relatively strong today, and that would be the Brian De Palma classic 1996's Mission Impossible, starring Tom Cruise, Emmanuel Baird, Ving Rhames, Gene Renault, and John Voight. It's pretty surprising to say the Mission Impossible franchise is still going strong all these years later, and most of the entries after this first one were much flashier and much more intricate from an action standpoint, but as a film from the 90s, this first impossible mission led by Tom Cruise, I think still holds up as a sound action adventure lined with plenty of mystery and a nicely layered plot. The performances I think are fantastic led by Cruise, but the twists and turns the story takes, the variety of the action and how it impacts the story as well as Cruise as Ethan Hunt just gives this movie a timeless appeal. The uh, direction from De Palma gives the film an ominous atmosphere that I think complements the story extremely well, but it's it's his staging of the action from the elaborate set pieces to the chase sequences and even the quieter moments that I think make this movie so good. And despite being a bit too digitally reliant in the finale, it's still a satisfying closing. And at number 25 is a mildly forgotten film with a fantastic cast about a group of people brought together to complete a job. But how can you do that when everyone is an enemy for a price? And John Frankenheimer's 1998 classic Ronin starring Robert De Niro, Sean Bean, Gene Renault and many others. I would say the most awesome qualities of Ronin are those that lie in this film's subtleties because Ronin is certainly an unassuming film for an action flick. It's methodical, The it's certainly story driven as well, and there isn't a ton of violent action, but when it does splash on the screen, it's memorable and I think suspenseful Ronan, I think also delivers an ensemble of great performances. De Niro is cool and calculating in the lead, but it is an ensemble effort with really everybody playing their part in the outcome. But uh, none of this, I think, is what makes Ronan one of the best action films of the decade. That would be just the result of all the impressive car chase sequences that are littered throughout this film. Good old-fashioned chase sequences fueled by precision driving, top-notch stunt work, and immaculate direction that just pulls you into the speed of the sequences like few films in this genre can. Next up at number 24 is a thrilling action flick from Rennie Harlan about a secret agent with amnesia who finds her past coming back to haunt her. And that film would, of course, be 1996's The Long Kiss Goodnight, starring Gina Davis and Samuel L. Jackson. What I really love about The Long Kiss Goodnight is how it's able to craft a unique story inside the assassin genre that's been done so many times. The uh, plot progression is smooth and always forward moving, and it's layered just enough to keep the engagement up. Plus, it's led by a killer performance from Gina Davis and from Samuel L. Jackson. I think they have a strong chemistry together. I think it makes the story easily engaging. And of course, when the action kicks in, the suspense elevates with ease. I think Rennie Harlan's direction is very sleek and the action and violence in this movie, I think, really fits inside the tone of the film perfectly. And A Long Kiss Goodnight may not be as flashy as other assassin flicks, but it's well crafted from the writing to the action to the performances to the direction and i think that's what gives this movie a timeless appeal
We're jumping back a year to 1995 for my number 23 movie, a larger budget sequel to a small indie movie we've already covered on this list. It follows a man who came back to settle the score with someone, anyone, and everyone in Robert Rodriguez's Desperado, starring Antonio Banderas and Salma Hayek. Antonio Banderas would burst onto the Hollywood action scene with Desperado, a ballet of bullets south of the border that delivered a stylistic violence most audiences had never seen before. It's hyper-realistic in places, in most places, but it's also very gritty and grounded during others, and it all translated into an action film with just a completely unique atmosphere and vibe. There's just relentless gunfire in this modern western and the elegance and all the carnage brought to the screen from rodriguez is nothing short of commendable i think banderas is just soaking in the scenery in this movie and just commanding the screen with ease salma hayek is world-class gorgeous and sure the mission of revenge at the core is a been there done that saga but it's also a tried and true formula that when used correctly can result in a timeless action romp and that's exactly what desperado is We've already talked about one martial arts legend in this list, and this next film at number 22 stars another when Jackie Chan would take on a street gang in 1995's Rumble in the Bronx, directed by Stanley Tong, also starring a ton of guys who get their asses kicked. The unofficial introduction of Jackie Chan to Western audiences, Rumble in the Bronx, when it was released, was just like a breath of fresh air in the action genre. Chan was doing his own stunts and delivering action to the screen we hadn't seen with Stallone and Arnold or Van Damme or Seagal, and I think the result is a just visual polish to the action choreography that still makes it look just as amazing today as it did back then. The story in this one is admittedly surface level thin, but the charisma and the stunt work from Chan is never limited as you take the ride of this mission with him from, I think, stunning action set pieces and chase sequences to just dazzling martial arts choreography. This movie delivered a bit of it all in the action department, and while it may get a tad silly in spots, Rumble in the Bronx is still considered a game changer in the genre of action. And coming in at number 21 is a movie not everybody may have as high on their list as I do. The McManus brothers are not angels. They were just sent from heaven to make life hell for all sinners in 1999's The Boondock Saints, starring Norman Reedus, Sean Patrick Flannery, and Willem Dafoe. Now, I think the blend of drama and action crafted in the Boondock Saints is near seamless as this pair of brothers gets a mission from God. Admittedly, it's more of an out-of-the-box drama, but when the violence kicks in and the action does as well, it's unrelenting as it can get in the genre. There's a slightly methodical pace to this film that I just enjoy. I think it really gives the characters time to breathe and grow. It gives the dynamic between Defoe's character time to seed itself and grow as well. And just overall, I would would say the atmosphere and the vibe that this movie delivers is just really an instant escape into the Boston underworld. The Boondock Saints is a very raw film. The performances are not perfect, but that's actually kind of just perfect for the needs of this story. And when the bullets are flying, which is frequent, you can't help but be all up in your seat in the middle of this emotionally fueled carnage. And that's it for today, guys. That wraps up episode eight, covering movies number 30 through 21. All awesome flicks worth checking out if you haven't seen them. Once again, if you did miss any of the past seven episodes in the series, I'll leave them linked for you guys to check out. Be on the lookout for episode nine coming very soon, breaking down films number 20 through 11. We are uh, coming to the closing of this list, and this next video will be the final 20 of the list. I hope to see you guys all there. Thank you so much for watching. As always, it's great. Greatly appreciated. I will see you all in the next episode. And until then, movies never say die. This is Jack Burton and the Pork Chop Express, and I'm talking to whoever's listening out there. Live a war. You gotta become war. I suppose we have to register you as a lethal weapon. You trying to say Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball?